Tony Lawback, who is joining us from down the road in Charleston, South Carolina. Tony, you've spoken about yesterday's event as one of the biggest flash flood events you've ever seen among your decades of storm chasing. So talk to about talk to us about what put this so high on your list. Well, Jeff, it was uh, it's interesting because, you know, we you talk to Jay Jack, Aaron Jay Jack and myself, you know, we both probably have decades upon decades of experience chasing storms. And when two of us come out and say this is one of the biggest, craziest rain tropical events we've ever seen, you know, we're, we're barking up the right tree there. And this was a sentiment even shared by residents, even those that went through Hurricane Florence six years ago, saying that they just they were mind blown by what it is that they were seeing. And I'm going to talk to you about why while I show you the science, the radar that happened while we were dealing with this. This all came in really with most of this brunt in from the late, say mid morning hours, all the way up until about the early afternoon hours while we had this one persistent band that spiraled up into the area and then it just trained heavy cell after heavy cell and being in the midst of one of those cells where it was raining i'm not kidding folks four maybe five inches per hour that is some crazy rains think about that for you snow lovers out there if you have a 10 to 1 snow ratio your average snow ratio that in that hour period of time, if it was snowing that hard, if you equivalated that to snow, you would be talking about 40 to 50 inches of snow happening in that short amount of time. That's just mind blowing stuff. Show you some of the video here because again, you've seen these scenes. It was just something else. We talked to residents who again, share that same type of sentiment when they were out about yesterday, checking out what was left behind by this rain. We were talking about residents who have been there for 10, 15, 20 years and said they've never seen anything quite this dramatic. And not not only what that you're seeing, you got to remember how quickly this all happened. This is why we call it a flash flood. It happens in a flash. And this is basically how this all went down. This was not coastal surge. This was not from a tidal surge. This was all from just the amount of rain that fell and that rain had nowhere to go. When you start piling on, as we mentioned several times, 18 inches of rain in that short amount of time, it has nowhere to go except for up, and that's basically what happened through a good chunk of town. You're seeing one area. Most of town looked like this. It was um, almost impossible to get around. Conditions continuing to today where we're still dealing with the lingering effects of where that water's all draining, the creeks and the streams and the tributaries. So they're still dealing with that. And then of course the cleanup and the restoration, that all is going to be next in line for folks. But many of these folks, again, just absolutely baffled. If you were with us early yesterday morning, I was talking to you about people who weren't even aware it was a storm coming. And while we were just sounding the alarm here at the AccuWeather Network saying, don't go to sleep on this, while it was not the widespread effects, it was that narrow band. And I'll tell you what, man, when you talk about the impacts to those folks there in Carolina Beach, Southport, that all in that area, you basically take an entire hurricane, it felt like you just shoved it right in that line. Uh, incredible stuff, Tony. Well, we appreciate all that you've done to document this and share the stories of those who have been affected by it over the past couple of days. Tony Lawback in Charleston, South Carolina. A uh, busy couple of weeks there for Tony uh, amid hurricane season.